hurricane's coming. The winds are picking up. I boarded up my house. I'm inside. It's dark, right? Um, at some point in time, the power company's going to shut things down because they don't want the lines energized while the wind's blowing. I'm bored. I'm scared. I'm nervous. I grab my book. I'm, I'm looking forward to read it. I can't concentrate. What's the wind doing? What's going on? And I'm tense. I'm nervous. I'm worried. The wind's picking up. Part of our roof rips up, galvanized steel, and flips back on itself. The porch roof that was overhanging flips back on top of the roof, and for hours it's just going boom, 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 boom. Finally, after three or four hours of that, it rips off and goes flying. Now all I've got over my head is plywood, and the rain is coming through the cracks. And the wind's picking up more. And at one point in time, the bathroom door blew shut. And now my house closed off momentarily. The pressure changed. I felt it in my ears like an airplane landing. And then one whole sheet of plywood of my roof popped off, which equalized the pressure again. But now I've got the storm coming into my house through this 4 by 8 hole. And we're still not quite peaking. The storm's getting stronger. We go into this one last room, try to get some sleep, lay in there on this mattress on the floor, and I'm wondering, am I going to make it through this? Or am I going to get sucked out the roof? I mean, it was rain going sideways. It was pouring down rain. You know, the rain's just sideways. Yeah, it, was it was almost cool. literally horizontal snow. When I opened the toilet lid, that water went, it just... The toilets, the water just sucking down mm -hmm. backwards. You know, just, just, you can hear it. But when that tree came through and then punched holes in the roofs, mm -hmm. that's when you felt the pressure that you're talking about. I mean, mm -hmm. you just, you felt your ears pop and I was like, oh Lord, don't take the roof. You know when you hike up, a, if you go up a large mountain or anything, it's really, it's, it's harder to breathe or you get used to it. It's like that, and then go all the way down to the bottom in two seconds. My ears propped several times during the pressure. It was literally like being up in an airplane or, you know, grabbing your nose and going, pulling. It did it twice. Your ears popping. Mm -hmm. The pressure would pop your ears. The noise was intense. We had a three inch piece of branch come through metal roof, shingles, decking, plywood. Spike through our bedroom, new room, spike right through. The force alone put that piece of wood through our ceiling. A piece of wood about this big, about that thick. I don't know if it was part of something, but it hit the house with such force. It went through as a, as a torpedo, broke double pane storm proof windows, bent the frame in the window, and the curtain rod was like this, laying in the middle of glass all over the place. You could still be sitting there hearing that monstrous wind blowing, blowing, and then every once in a while you'd hear the snap and the crack uh, of a tree yeah. collapsing. You know, the sound of the wind going through was frightening enough, but that sound, I know this is going to sound stupid, it's like the, the, the second Lord of the Rings movie where you have the trees and they're all kind of moving around. You can hear them making that. Like as they're ripping out mm. the ground. A deep gruntle sound. It was just like the trees were crying. They were just, you could just hear them moaning and groaning when they just, they just kind of just, ooh. And, and then you hear the crack. And then, you know, mm -hmm. I hated that sound. We would sit there and I just, you'd wait for it. And you would just, the you knew it was coming. Back. And you knew, it, and when it came, it was just like, you just, ooh, cringe because it was horrible. Our windows would flex like breathing. Where you would lift the windows up, water was just pouring in. We have double-paned windows. It was, they started filling up with water. And then for 30 minutes, I had a box, because it was the only thing that I could find that I could put over that window. I was holding a box that was getting glass and, and all kinds of debris up against it, going doo -doo -doo. And every, every hit you know, that it would bring back, I'd push it up against it. But every time I did that, more of the glass would break. And I had to put up the sofa cushions on the windows 
to keep the water from forcing in, which it eventually did. And I grabbed the, the tabletop, and we have like this breakfast bar that hung out maybe about three foot or so, and the table fit right underneath it. So it was like, that table went, foom, and it was halfway underneath there, and I'm like, okay, that's pretty, pretty sturdy. This table's good. And my daughter's gymnastics mat, I was like, uh, got it, grabbed it, and I just literally put it around me, and I sat in there, like underneath it, and the dogs kind of came in with me. So we're sitting underneath the table. You know, you'd feel the wind, and then all of a sudden your ears would tighten up. You know, like before big gusts, your ears would be like, and then you would just feel it come through, and you're just like, Jesus. And I start hearing banging and stuff flying around outside. I hear this like, like a tree falling, because literally that's what it was. But I kind of stepped outside and looked across the street, and this big, huge oak tree that these people have in their yard had fallen down. All of a sudden, I'm, I'm doing my five-finger math here, going like, we got like three of those things. Because it dawned on me like, yeah, those trees can fall in on us. And the gusts would be even harder, and you could just feel that your house kind of uh, move around. It kept getting even stronger. And I remember sitting there going like, this is pretty bad. And we were only like maybe an hour and a half into it. It was pouring down rain, you know, the rain's just sideways. Next thing I know, I'm hearing, bam, really loud. And it, you know, scared me, I like jolted. And I guess the little piece of board that goes over top of your attic had been smacked down. And then about five minutes later, I just hear this, wham! And it literally sounded like a bomb went off. All I could do is just kind of brace myself underneath that table with a little mat around me and just hearing everything's banging against us. It was almost like somebody just took a big sledgehammer and was just beating different parts of your house constantly. Oh. And that big boom that hit, I come to find out, was one of the trees that oh, fell on us. Oh and this other huge oak tree got split in half, literally split down the middle and hit us. From that point on, I was sitting there because now we've got water coming through the walls. And I, I'm looking across the dining room at the entranceway to our living room and it's just pouring water. So the water just came through the two halves of the house and just poured down in between. And the roof ripped off the back half of the house. It just peeled away, the whole thing just peeled off. And then that's where the tree fell. So that went through the, through the roof and knocked the through ceiling out in our bedroom. You know, I, I've been through a lot, you know, and I've done a lot of things. It takes a lot to get my heart pounding. And it takes a lot to kind of excite me. That's one of the first times I thought, Oh shit, I could die. And I just remember laying there underneath that table, just gripping it and sitting on that, the floor and with the dogs, my Greyhound cookies just kind of frozen in place underneath the table. Binky's just hanging out, <laughs> you know, Binky's my little beagle, beagle mutt. And they seem okay, but I remember I was more scared for them. Like I was hanging on to them and just trying to be like, stand here, stand here. It literally just sounds like a freight train coming through your house and the wind and you can hear the gusts. All I can think of it is if you have like a microphone and you're blowing on the microphone and you're hearing that, that's what it sounds like. Like everything just And the trees are starting to really lean over and you could feel it like You know, the sound of the wind going through was frightening enough, but that sound, I know this is gonna sound stupid. It's like the, the, the second Lord of the Rings movie where you have the trees and they're all kind of moving around you can hear them making that like as they're ripping like, out mm, the a deep gruntle sound. It's kind of mind blowing to know how powerful it was. Like, you know, no, you can try to describe it, but you can't like to just feel it around you and know that this thing is way bigger than you will ever imagine. You know, I was hearing the roof peeling away and all the noises are incredibly loud and knowing there was nothing I could do about it. You know, at least when you're dealing with other people, you can, you can understand what might be coming, what could happen. You know, you can prepare for it mentally and you can brace for it. But I couldn't brace for anything. All I was doing was just sitting there waiting for my house to collapse on me. Sweating like crazy because there was no AC. It was dark. Even, you know, when it's daylight, it was dark. I laid there for probably a good hour just gripping myself and gripping the dogs. And it's probably the most tense I've been. And then come to find out afterwards, there was a ton of tornadoes that went through there also. Now, I couldn't differentiate between what was tornado or what was hurricane. You know, you don't hear a difference and you don't feel a difference. But just the pressure and the force of it hitting my house, it had me so tense for so long. It was just literally scaring the shit out of me constantly. When it was peaking and I'm tense and I'm, you know, I'm just dealing with it, I, would, I was just constantly waiting for like, ease up, 
just ease up. And then it kind of disappeared a little bit. And all I could think of was, oh, no, that's the eye. And, you know, understanding how that works, you know, it's coming from one direction, you know, horrendous wind from one direction. The eye goes over and then it hits you from the other direction. And a lot of times that's what does the most damage is that second hit, everything pushing this way and then it turns around and rips it off. So I'm sitting there and I just remember going like, oh, just thinking in my mind, dude, like I, I don't, I don't want to go through this thing. But I remember as it started to subside, I was like, please God, like let that be it. You know, don't, don't just be like a little, you know, a break in the wind, just be dying down. You know, I was ready for that thing to end. There's a the phenomenon that they were saying was happening where it's not tornadoes. Basically, as, as it's spinning, you know, it somehow causes, it, I guess it would be kind of like tornadoes, but micro tornadoes, they pop in and out all over the place. And it, we think that's what happened. They're called meso vortices. And they are typically, they are inside the eye of the hurricane along that wall. So a hurricane is one big vortice and vortices can break down into little vortices. And in the eye of a hurricane, you will see that. And so basically you have your big parent vortice hurricane eye wall. And in that spinning eye wall are little tiny spinning mini vortices that are breaking off the main vortice of the hurricane. It's not technically a tornado, but it is just as dangerous, if not more so than a tornado in a hurricane in cyclones because cyclones typically spin up brief lived, short lived, weaker tornadoes. If you're stuck in near and around a mezzo vortice, you're in the eye wall of a hurricane and those meso vortices can get really strong and powerful. It sounded right. like hail hitting the house. Yeah. And not the roof, the walls. The walls. Which is, you know, I thought that north or our west wall was gonna come in the house. I mean I mean literally to me I just had a feeling it's it's gonna collapse. It's gonna come in. It was a mobile home. You could just put your hand on the wall and just feel it just hitting. It was just horrible. Even though we knew it was daytime. It, you it could, was dark. It was dark. It was dark. That was out. another thing. It was dark out because there was no sun because the storm had taken over everything. That was scary because you go from dark, dark of night and then you go to this gray stuff. Murky, gray, yuck. white stuff and yuck and no breaks where the sun came through at all. We lived on a busy street. Yeah. Nothing. You know, not, not a car, not a sound, not a trap, no. not a nothing, nothing out there. You could go and look. Quiet. Could see nothing. You'd open that door and the only thing you could hear was the wind. There was no, no mm -hmm. sounds of, of life, no sounds no. of people. And it was, yeah, it was apocalyptic. It was, it was scary. We still had power, so it was a matter mm -hmm. of we had entertainment, but you could still be sitting there hearing that monstrous wind blowing blowing and then every once in a while you'd hear the snap and the crack mm -hmm. of a tree yeah. collapsing it was just like the trees were crying they were just you could just hear them moaning and groaning when they just they just kind of just Ooh, and, and then you hear the crack and then you know mm -hmm. oh, i hated that sound we would sit there and i just you'd wait for it and you would just the you knew it was coming branch. And you knew, it, and when it came, it's just like you just ooh, cringe because it was horrible. Yeah. You just sit there and you can just hear it, and you know things are going on. You don't want to hear it. You don't want the things to be happening, but you can't get it out of your head. You can't relax. You can't go to sleep. You know? And it was getting scary listening to this this thing because you're hearing all these people saying, you know, we can't get to this, we can't get to that. Yeah. We're stuck. We're stuck. We're stuck. Yeah. And then the power goes out. And then. Yeah. Our power went out. The neighbor, I mean, it just literally boom yeah. all around us. It was like blackout. The snow was going up over the top of the rail and down into the ground. Yeah. So it was probably a good couple feet higher than that rail. And like I say, you couldn't see anything. My daughter and her husband, they were snowed in. They lived in town. They had no power. They had no lights. They had no cast. Okay. They had no heat. We were baby. able <laughs> to get them here before the roads completely shut down and believe me that was a pain but they got to our house they were not able to bring anything from their home they lost all the food in their refrigerator all the food in their freezer by the time things got going the storm was full-fledged they barely had time to get themselves here we took a bunch of food 
from the fridge perishables, milk. Um, That's another thing we did, yeah. And we took it and we put it in a big cooler and we set it outside. Outside the front door. You know, and that we kept it cold. We had these half gallon tea <laughs> bottles that we filled with water and then froze them. So we had three or four of them Before in our freezer the and a couple of them in our freezer in the, in the, in the kitchen. And because of that, the stuff that was in our freezer and in our freezer in the kitchen stayed fresh mm -hmm. or stayed usable. In the wintertime, we expect it gets so cold, you know, if you don't have your, your um, pipes wrapped, especially in a mobile home, um, they will freeze up. We, and We turned on the water in the tub. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and let and it had a trickle. Yeah. So we, we constantly had a flow of water. Who cared about the water bill yeah. in that point in time? Plus, we had the hot water would still work. So we had a trickle of water coming into our bathtub because if it was going to freeze, that's yeah. where it would freeze because that's where the water came in the house. Yeah. Circle right outside the front door about <laughs> the size of this table was our working area because all around that the snow was... Oh, yeah. It this was, deep. It was bad. On there because it, it snowed in. But we kept it dug out there so we had a place to put our food. We could open the front door and let ventilation through every once in a while. Um, but, I mean, everything that we were running, the stove, the mantle lamps and stuff like that, you know, they're going to gas you if you're not careful. Mm -hmm. We have winter storms that might shut this town for down for a day. Mm -hmm. Maybe two at the most. Mm -hmm. Winter storm Atlas shut down this part of the state for eight days. Yeah. The wind was picking up and then the rain started coming in. And then the rain was literally skipping across the water and I've never seen that before in my life. Like the tree that actually broke and hit the house, it didn't just deroot and hit the house. It snapped off 20 feet up, flew about 10 feet and then hit the house. And then as I was coming down, that's when the trim, trim actually fell off the roof and hit me while I was going to get mom. She ran and we grabbed Ruby and we just ran in the washroom as quickly as we could. And even at this point there was water <coughs> pouring in um, we saw the tree was through the roof. Um, we couldn't see any damage up to that point. The window was smashed. And then the rain just started pouring in because right where it fell, it's a, it's a gully on our roof. It just started pouring in through there and right onto the TV, right onto our sound system. Everything there just got so much water damage. But at the time, I was just thinking, where's my mom? Where's my sister? I was just, I wanted to get them into safety because I know like in our house, we, we have quite a bit of steel in our house, which is, I think that's why that tree didn't come through the house. Like a branch did, but I think that's why the whole tree wasn't in our living room. So after Zachary came down, running from downstairs, and I'm screaming, get to the back of the house, get to the back of the house. And I ran for the laundry room, and then, but Zach's like screaming, mom, come, we got to get in the bathroom, we got to get in the bathroom, because that's center of our house, and it's behind a steel beam. So we know that that is the safest place for us to be. We get into the bathroom with Lexi and... Um, and Ruby and we, we sat there and we just we just listened we just listened and then it it started to calm down we called 911 and we went out because we didn't know what to do we didn't know we didn't know if we were trapped and Zach's talking to 911 and we opened the bathroom door to to see what's going like to see because it wasn't when I say calm down it did oh. not really calm down but it was less intense so we opened the door we went out it hit again we ran back in the bathroom because we didn't know what the heck, is it gonna be worse this time, what's going on? So we were on the phone actually with nine, or Zachary's on the phone with 911 as the second wave hits. And she's just saying, stay stay where you are. Then it finally did start to calm down and, and we were like, okay, we need to go out and see, we need to see, assess the damage, see, you know, are we trapped in this house? Are we, mm -hmm. you know, what's left of this house? When we went outside afterwards, there was mass destruction in some parts, but right on our boathouse, our furniture didn't even move. One of the trees I found was 45 inches and it was snapped. 45 inches in diameter and it was snapped. So that just shows you how dense some of the wind and the weather was, but in other parts it just wasn't. Everybody was saying to us, there's another one coming and this one is a monster. It's bigger than what just hit you. Yeah. So we were like, oh crap, what do we do now? Like, we, there's no way we can feel comfortable staying here, but we couldn't get out. Yeah. 750 feet of driveway was blocked by yeah. trees that were monster trees. When I went down, I looked a little bit and it was just, it was like a, going through a, a jungle park just to go through down our driveway. 
so because we were expecting this other monster storm, Zachary ran around like a chicken with the head cut off, putting food and water and soup and you name it into baskets for us and stuff. And he got, we had some um, pump up mattresses um, that he took downstairs. And then Lexi and I went around, gathered bedding and clothing, candles. We all took candles down, lanterns. Um, lanterns. And we, we got the animals. Um, we found my cat who was hiding inside my couch, um, put her in a crate. We got Ruby. And as soon as the rain started coming again, we ran downstairs and we slept down there all night on bedrock. And because uh, my basement is not a finished basement, it is on bare bedrock and there's water everywhere. But there's one area where it's high enough that we were able to put the mattresses and be comfortable. And we were terrified. We were terrified.